Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are planting ranunculus and anemones in the cut flower garden. I came into the shed quick because it is quite breezy outside. So I thought we would run through some details in here, then we'll go back out. I think we're about a month later in planting these this year than we were last year. I wanna say it was right around the last part of March we were out planting last year. And here we are toward the latter part of April because of our super cold spring weather. Uh, I've been looking at the forecast though. Our 10 day doesn't show any Temperatures near freezing, it's like upper 30s and 40s. We just got through with a 27 and 29 degree nights, two consecutive nights where I had to wrap fruit trees and wrap some other things, but I think we are past it. And ranunculus and anemones typically don't wanna be subjected to temperatures below like 28. That's when they'll start to rot. So anyway, I've been watching the forecast closely. I brought a couple of our trays in here. We have the whole gator full of these trays. I already started clearly the pre-sprouting process. It's been between two and three weeks ago. The process usually only takes 10 to 14 days, but you know, again, I started the process thinking it was gonna warm up and it didn't. So we had to hang on to them in the greenhouse for a little longer than I thought I was gonna have to. And the pre-sprouting process is really easy. It gives you a little bit of a head start. Like you'll get blooms two to three weeks sooner if you do it. It's not necessary to do it. You can just buy the corms and pop them right in the ground at the appropriate time and they will grow and bloom for you. But I like to get a little bit of a head start if possible. It's really a very simple process. You take those corms, you put them in room temperature water somewhere for three to four hours. Just set your timer, three to four hours. I go by every like 30 minutes or so and kind of swish the water around so that there's oxygen in the water. And then you take them out of the water after the timer goes off and you line them up in a tray that has just a little bit of soil at the bottom. It can be on my trays are watertight. They don't drain water. I just make sure not to put a lot of moisture in there, but a little bit of soil at the bottom. You line those corms up a little bit of soil over the top, and then you keep them somewhere that's warmer than outside, usually minimum of about 50 degrees. Our greenhouse stays about 60 at night, gets way warmer during the day, and so mine are a little bit ahead of the game, but it just speeds up their rooting process. They start to form roots, they even start to form some leaves, and they're good to go, ready to be planted, and they'll just pick up and start growing faster. I wanted to pull a couple of these out because you know not all of them take, but let's look at this one right here. So see this bunch? I will probably still, even though this one hasn't formed any new roots, I will probably still plant this one because it's got nice firm, they almost look like dahlia tubers, just in miniature. Uh, but then you'll have ones that look like, let me pull, oh my gosh, they're so rooted. Look at this, oh my word. <laughs> you'll have ones that look like this right here. Clearly way ahead, look at that. So yeah. I will probably put these toward the end of a row so that if nothing happens, I can just pop them out and we don't have any holes. Uh, but all of these look like this, that is so great. So these are the ranunculus right here. You can see another one that looks very healthy. It'll probably still grow. It just hasn't started it in yet. Kind of same for our anemone tray here. You'll find some that are going for it and some that aren't. They do look a little bit different though. So these aren't quite as big. They usually, when they start out, they kind of look like a little rock, honestly. And you can see it's formed roots here and there's a growth point there, so that one's good to go. Uh, let's see. Oh my word. There's so many in here. Are these all singles? They are. So many plants right here. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. But then let's look in this side because I'm not really seeing much of anything. Oh, I see a growth point right here. See that? You might even run across some areas that look like they are starting to mold a little bit. As long as it's not squishy, as long as it's still firm, which this one is, I'm gonna go ahead and plant it. We can see some evidence of growth. I think the mold will just dry right up probably because of the humidity in the greenhouse and the watertight tray. During the pre-sprout process, I typically keep try to keep the soil just ever so slightly moist, like almost dry, but just a tiny bit of moisture. And if I notice that dry out, I'll just sprinkle a little bit of water on top of the soil, not enough for it to pool at the bottom at all, just enough to where it doesn't completely dry out. So when we go out there, we're gonna go ahead and amend the soil, so Biotone Starter Fertilizer, and we will plant the both of these types, anemones and ranunculus, about two to three inches deep, and we space anemones about six inches apart, ranunculus typically about nine. I think I'm gonna try to squeeze them in a little bit uh, closer than that because we have so, so many of them. But I will show you out there. Let's head out. I'm gonna gather up my stuff here. So these are all the trays right here, and they're just loaded with corms. 
It's amazing how many you can fit in these trays. And we are going to be planting them in the same location we did last year that worked out really well. They will for sure take up this whole first row. Last year they went all the way down to where the hoops end. About a little over halfway down. I did pull about a third of our corms, you know, earlier to grow them on in there in the Hartley cold frames and in a couple of the raised beds in our raised bed vegetable garden, uh, but they multiply every single year. I mean, where I had one ranunculus planted last year, some of them will divide up to like five, six times, and you'll have that many more the next year. It's crazy. The way that we grow them here in zone six is we, you know, do this process, plant them in the ground. Um, they can be planted earlier than a lot of other things because they are a lot more cold tolerant than some things. We let them grow, bloom, and then you have to let the leaves stay on the plant even when they're done blooming until they start to yellow and die back, kind of like spring bulbs, like tulips and daffs. And then you wait until that foliage has died back. Then you dig the corms and you just let them dry and you store them somewhere in a bag until the next year when you're ready to plant them. I would try to winter these over like we do our we did our dahlias this last year by just mulching over them because I think they would do fine, except for their bloom season is so short. I don't want to let them sit in a whole row in the cut flower garden doing nothing. I want it to be productive. So digging ranunculus is way easier than digging uh, dahlias. We've got our drip tape right here, two rows of it. This is the tape we used last year. So I'm thinking I, there's very little hard water residue on it. So I'm thinking we're okay. And then I do have the super hoops. These are from Gardener's Supply. We put these out last year. I actually kind of like the way they look. <laughs> Is that weird? Even if we don't use them, it'd be kind of nice to have it. Last year we did put some cloth over them a few times. So, you know, we may need to, we may not. So the way I like to plant them is right at an emitter. So there's an emitter right there. We'll plant a corm here. We'll go six inches, plant the next one here. Same on the other side and then we will have a row down the center. So in the end, we will have a corm every six inches and we will have three rows total. So there'll be 180 feet total of ranunculus in this row and anemones depends on how they fit. Okay, let me show you quick how one of these goes in the ground. Even, I still need to amend the soil though. Okay, so this is what it'll look like. I'm just gonna loosen up the soil a bit. It's pretty loose. I can even see some compost in here still from last year. We take our ranunculus corm, put it in about two to three inches down we will be piling some soil around the leaves and that's okay. Going just like that. So it's very easy. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm going to do the biotone and then I'm gonna get after planting. Now we'll take a look.
guys, I got them all planted. We ended up with one full row of ranunculus and just part of a row of anemones, which is about perfect. Uh, and I did double up some of the ranunculus, like if they were real little or just barely starting to sprout, I'd put a couple of them pretty close together, almost in the same hole. And then I did fudge my spacing a bit. Like I said, I was going to put them six inches apart and it worked out absolutely perfectly. Like I was just right at the end when I uh, ran out of ranunculus to plant. So this row ranunculus, and then you can see where kind of the darker soil I watered them all in. Uh, that's about where they end. So we've got, this one is an anemone double mix, really beautiful double flowers. And then that goes to here, which we've got a decane white or decan white. And then we've got just, it was labeled just anemone. And then edge of dusk, I think. The edge of dusk was labeled edge of night and edge of dust. <laughs> it's like, I've never heard of edge of dust anemones. So I Googled it real quick because I thought, well, maybe I had them last year. I don't know and it's edge of dusk. So it's neither edge of night or edge of dust. So we had our wires crossed on that one. And then I'll run down the row here. Maybe we can toss a picture up, but we've got the rose variety of ranunculus here. And then it goes into where that white tag is into salmon, quite a lot of salmon. And then La Belle Champagne starts right here, goes to this section here, which is the romantic mix. I had the most of the romantic mix. And then we have a variety called black and marshmallow, which is one of my favorites. And for some reason, one of the fewest I have. And then I realized I had way more of the romantic mix. <laughs> so romantic mix goes all the way down here to the label Picatee, which is my least favorite of all of them. So I have a pretty small section of those. And I do use a couple of bricks to weigh down the drip tape. No amount of landscape staples keep that drip tape from moving around. It's just, you know, when the system turns on, water's filling those tubes and it just shakes them all over the place. And also they expand and contract based on the heat. Um, so when it's hot out, they're a lot more floppy and like they just stretch out. Uh, and then when it's cold, they tighten back up again and will pull. So if I can kind of, I, I don't pull them super tight, but I just pull them a little bit tight and put a brick down at the end. And that does help a little bit. And then at this end, of the anemones, we actually had a couple of them come back and anemones are a little bit better about that, especially in our zone six. But it's kind of the same story with those. I don't wanna dedicate a uh, row in this garden with anemones or ranunculus when I can dig them and put something else in their place that's really productive when they store so easily and they're so easy to plant. I mean, when you're only having to dig a two to three inch hole in fluffy compost, that's not, that's not a bad day of planting right there. Now I did not mulch these today. I'm going to do that a different day because I'm kind of running out of time. I got to go to water everything, check on everything with all the breeze, even though we have our drips on and everything. And it did rain last night, wind dries everything out pretty fast. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the last part of my day. Uh, but the ranunculus, I'm not sure about the anemones, but I think they're roughly on the same time schedule. They, they uh, bloom roughly 90 days after you plant them. So depending on what happens, I don't really know what these are gonna do. You know, we have a head start, thankfully, by pre-sprouting them and we'll see if it just shoots up, the heat just shoots up uh, because they don't really love to be out here in the heat or if we have kind of a gradual warm up. It's gonna be a, an interesting year to see how those react to whatever we get weather-wise. But I will likely not fertilize these again. You know, they've got the biotone today and then we will put the land and sea on them uh, probably in the next couple of days and that has a lot of nutrients in it which will feed the plants. And they're out here for such a short amount of time that I really don't find it necessary to fertilize them again. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. Super happy to have them in the ground. Now we have freed up some space on the greenhouse floor. We have annuals on their way probably, I think next week we have our first load of annual flowers coming and we're gonna need this space. So I'm very happy to have those in. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next video. Bye.